up, big guy? Come here, Gunner. Come say hi to the people. How's it going? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland. This is my first time ever going live here on YouTube. And I'm not sure exactly how this works. Um, I guess I'll wait for some people to come on. I've heard people say that before. How's it going, everybody? My two people so far. Bean, Ethereal, Psychonaut. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. I've never gone live before here on YouTube. I just did it a minute ago on TikTok. Um, and that was kind of cool. But I have to remember that the camera's here, so I can't say stupid stuff. Um, I'm here with my dog, Gunner, and we're in the forest. It's actually a sunny day here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. The sun finally decided to come out for a day. It's been pouring rain for several days, so I've been just like cooped in the house. Got some serious cabin fever, so came out for a walk today, just me and my dog, Gunner, and it's very peaceful. And these trails are some of my favorite ones except for they're being developed. So over there, you can see the tree line. That's where a new development is going in. There's another development over there, but it's kind of a strip of this really nice coniferous forest running through here. A lot of wetlands in here. You can hear water running all over the place, which is kind of nice. It's very peaceful out here. And this is a deep kind of conifer uh, forest area. A lot of this Douglas fir, Pseudosuga mensisi, and uh, Western hemlocks are growing out here. Great ectomycorrhizal partners for mushrooms, these trees here. And so this moss co covered kind of dank environment in here is home to a lot of mushrooms usually, but it has been uh, a strange mushroom year, not a good mushroom year really, but mushrooms are showing up despite the fact that it snowed a couple times, which is unusual here in Western Washington. And we had like freezing rain and kind of a hard freeze and everything. So, um, you know, but there's still mushrooms coming up. So just come on a walk with me. And the first thing I came across here is this stick. Gunner's kind of sniffing on it. And right down here, you see these little, little mushrooms growing out of the stick. Orange, little concentric rings on them. This one is known as the false turkey tail, looks sterium. So sterium hirsutum, I wish it would focus on the mushroom and not on my face. But uh, one way to tell these apart from the turkey tail or Trimedes versicolor is that if you flip it over, so it's smooth here, and then when I flip it over, smooth underneath also. So this is a really common wood decayer here growing on this stick. I think they mainly like hardwoods. This looks like a, a chunk of red alder, probably. And you can see the sterium starting to Produce fruiting bodies, young ones. Look like little fried eggs. Check that out. That's kind of cool. Never really noticed that. So, yeah. Cute. Look, little fried eggs. Little sterium hirsutum. So, kind of cool. Um, we're just going to go walking down this trail. I don't know really what's growing out here. So, we're going to find out together. Thanks for joining. If you're new to this channel, I talk about wild mushrooms. Just go on mushroom walks. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society. I've been picking mushrooms since I was a little kid. My grandma got me into it. I've just been a mushroom nerd my whole life. And so this is what I love to do is come out here. I just find mushrooms fascinating. Here's a couple flushes of pretty big ones. Hey, Gunner, Gunner, what's this? See these? Oh, they're getting, getting pretty old. Right down here are some younger ones, kind of, I don't know, honey-ish colored. They've got a really kind of woody fibrous stem underneath here. I can see dark spores starting to develop on the gills under there. This one is uh, known as Hyphaloma. Uh, I believe it's Hyphaloma dispersum, but they're not growing very dispersed. It's been a very big year for these mushrooms. So these are closely related to the sulfur tuft, Hyphaloma fasciculari, also related to the conifer tuft, Hyphaloma capnoides. Um, and the capnoides are edible. These ones are said to not be edible. And so treat them like you would the sulfur tufts. Here's some bigger ones. They put out a dark purple brown spore, kind of like your psilocybe mushroom or something. And they all kind of have this greenish tinge to the gills, uh, all these hyphalomas. So these mushrooms glow 
really pretty bright under a UV light. Um, so kind of fun to come out here with a UV light at night maybe and have a look at all these hyphaloma dispersum growing here on the sides of this trail. Um, normally they don't grow very clustered like other species of hyphaloma. Uh, hyphaloma capnoides and fasciculari, they like to grow in a cespitose cluster, kind of like, you know, a big clump of them. The dispersum, I think that has to do with their species name, is that they grow more dispersed, although it's just a crazy good year for them. They're loving this. So right here, it's like wood chips, and there's a lot of natural debris and bark and stuff, but this trail has been covered in wood chips. And then right on the edge of the trail is where you're gonna find wild mushrooms a lot of the time. So these hyphaloma dispersum growing here in the, in the wood chips and stuff. Um, and they're growing near the edges of the trail. You'll notice that they don't really grow right in the middle of the trail very often because over here is where the wood chips are getting thin. And so the mycelium is eating all of this stuff in here just, I don't know, half inch underneath the surface. And when it reaches the edge of the wood chips, it runs out of food. And that's when it's going to um, create fruiting bodies because it wants to send new spores out into the wind. And so these mushrooms typically growing like solitarily. Right now they're just growing like crazy, especially in this little section of woods. I found a lot of related uh, Hyphaloma capnoides growing this season, also a big year for those. And I do have a video somewhere on here where I eat them. I cook them and eat them, and they're good. Um, these ones are said to be toxic. So I know the sulfur tuft can cause really bad GI upset. There's even reports in Europe of people dying from them. So I don't know. There's, there's a lot of edible mushrooms out there. You don't need to try to eat these kind. But uh, it's always cool to see big clusters of mushrooms growing. So, how do I see comments? Anyways, I'm new to this live thing, so welcome everybody. Looks like 33 people are watching. Somebody, uh, crazy killer, fiddleheads, May 1st and morel is my goal, yeah. Loving morel season coming up here, probably in a couple months. I've seen uh, pictures of them being found in California right now, like Southern California and people's gardens are uh the um morcella importuna or some similar variety that they have down there uh arguably saprotrophic morcella species that's growing right now in january so that's crazy we probably won't see them here in washington until april um maybe march it's what really weather dependent these mushrooms are not paying attention to the english calendar they're really waiting for um conditions to get right you know so there are spring mushrooms and there are fall mushrooms morels love to grow in the spring and i think uh you know it's just something about how the the, the freezing and everything it just preps that mycelium so that when it starts to warm up it gets moist again those mushrooms a lot of ascomycetes grow in the spring here whereas the you know the bulk of the culinary edibles that people are after to after out here uh, grow in the fall so but morels last spring was just insane you can watch some of the videos on the channel about uh, the morels that i was finding they were just growing everywhere so fingers crossed for another spring like that because um this fall kind of sucked so you're doing good hey nice surprise what's up everybody Somebody found some azies near Astoria, right on. Yeah, mushrooms are still out here. Despite the snow and the freezing weather, they're finding a way to live. Oh, look at that big flush of sterium growing on this log. So sometimes tremolo will parasitize this and you'll see these big blobs of orange witch's butter growing on these hardwood logs that are covered in sterium. Uh, there's also another orange boogery looking mushroom that's growing like crazy right now in the forest here of the northwest called uh, uh, Dacromyces chrysospermus. So we'll probably run into some of that here in a minute. I know down here it gets a little bit more fungally diverse. So we'll probably run into a few other things. But honestly, out here, slim pickings right now for mushrooms. I mean, you got to slow down and look really close. 
there does seem to be a lot of like LBMs, little brown mushrooms, lawn mushrooms, uh, antilomas, a lot of the gallerina semilanciettas, uh, a lot of little moss loving gallerina growing right now. So if you're into the little mushrooms, which I think you should get into them if you're interested in mushrooms, because it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities of things to look at, study, be surprised by when you find them, you know. Right now I'm studying this, uh, this Entoloma, uh, which I thought was near Cerisium, but Alan Rockefeller this morning was saying that it's probably in the, in the species Edulis. Um, so I'm going to actually send some in to the great American Michael Blitz. So I've shared this on my Facebook uh, page, but that's private. So all, you know, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram already, I'm at mushroom.wonderland, mushroom period wonderland. And I'll post all the information for the great American Michael Blitz here on the West Coast. So anybody can send in 10 different specimens to be sequenced. You just have to put an iNaturalist observation next to you know, uh, with pictures of your mushroom, then send in that mushroom and keep that information. It'll be sequenced, and then you can compare it to your own observations. And uh, kind of fun. So these hyphaloma disperse them. Here's a nice little grouping of them. Not very dispersed. And uh, very kind of woody stems. That's one of the features of hyphaloma that I noticed very fibrous woody stems but they're gonna have a dark spore print. If you take this cap home and you pinch the stem off and then you just lay it on a piece of paper or something like that, piece of glass, uh, the bathroom mirror, something like that, you know, even a little picture, you can pull off the wall and lay it on the picture on the glass and then you can see what color the spores are. These ones are gonna be a dark purpley brown color, but I have already collected some of these to send off to the Great American Michael Blitz. Just because I want to know, is this truly hyphaloma dispersum? Because the look, the morphology of these ones that I'm finding here look a little bit different than a lot of the textbook uh, hyphaloma dispersums that I come across. So this could be a different species, and there's no way I would ever know. Um, I'll put them under the microscope and stuff like that, but until it gets a sequence done, you know, we won't know if it's the real dispersum. Look, here's a pretty good example of hyphaloma dispersum uh, pretty textbook looking actually can i flip this camera let me see there we go so check that out it's got a very kind of fibrous stipe a lot of little fibrils on it and uh this one's growing pretty solitary you know pretty dispersed so that would you know that would align with its species name dispersum so uh it's got this lighter colored margin and these are pretty stout, pretty tough little stem. This one's fairly young. Hasn't had a lot of spores drop into the gills yet. So the gills are kind of a yellowish color. I don't have my UV light with me right now, but if I put this under the UV light, it would probably glow really pretty green. And you could come out here at night with the UV light, and these mushrooms would just be glowing all over the side of the tree. Dachmyces chrysospermus, you know, regionally people might call this one um which is butter i think the most accepted common name for this one uh, right now is um, just orange jelly fungus so here's a chunk of it very boogery if you like eating boogers this one is probably a good one for you to eat raw this is one of the few mushrooms that i've heard is okay to eat raw but you still probably wouldn't want to uh eat a whole bunch of them you'd probably get a belly ache I mean, there's certain things in mushrooms. So there's like a sheath around the, uh, the hyphae that make up one of these mushrooms, make up all mushrooms. And it's um, a, a mixture of these triterpenes and these, uh, I think that's what it, the word I'm looking for, and, um, and chitin. And so this chitin is the same cell that's like in uh, shellfish. So you can't really digest it. If you ate like a big old pile of these, which I don't know why you would, but you probably get a belly ache. But otherwise, some people eat them like candy of the forest or something. And very slippery. It's cute. So this one grows on, you know, conifers here. Douglas fir or western hemlock. I see it growing a lot on the hemlock. Um, so this one is different than your tremula species. That would be more considered. 
uh, other. So orange jelly fungus, Dacromyces, Chrysospermus. And I'm going to toss it back because I don't really feel like eating that today. All right, hopefully, hopefully I'm streaming better now. Look at this, all these hyphaloma growing here on the side of the trail. One interesting thing, if you know, if you're getting into mycology and you maybe you're thinking about getting a microscope, um, one of the first things that I discovered with my microscope, I was looking at like a weird little species of hyphaloma that I found growing on the edge of this marsh, and they have a certain cell called a chrysocystidia and, it, and it's a very obvious yellow kind of bottle shaped cell uh psychologist for knowing that but like as you pick these mushrooms as you look at them in the field you take them home you get them on the microscope you learn about features like that now you know so much about that mushroom so it just becomes a whole another world when i can just pick uh you know like today last night i was uh really diving deep into the microscope looking at a like a common lawn mushroom this entoloma growing out in the grass and i thought it was entoloma cerisium but alan rockefeller is telling me it might be something else i'm gonna have it sequenced and stuff but you can just take any old mushroom and like turn it into hours of research and learning about it and now all of a sudden you're like an expert on these entolomas by the end of the day so i mean the world of mycology can just go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole how much do you want to know you know so anyways thank you guys for coming with me it's a beautiful day martin luther king jr day and uh the sun is out which is very nice to be getting a little vitamin d out here filtered through the beautiful canopy of this forest and this, this is my church you know what i mean this is where i get my peace I get my mind right and I also get to discover all kinds of stuff it's like a treasure hunt you know what I mean right now we're coming up with just tons of the hyphaloma which is fine you know different times of year different mushrooms are flushing and this is the time for the dispersum the capnoides the conifer tufts they came out like a month ago or so and I'm not seeing many of those growing anymore uh, they've kind of gone past their season but these dispersum are just all over the place so it is like walking in a mushroom wonderland i mean the edges of this trail are just completely covered in the hyphaloma other than that not a ton of macro fungi to look at you can slow down start looking really close over logs looking for little slime molds and you know this is the year of the saprotrophs so not a ton of mycorrhizal mushrooms this year really i mean there's some chanterelles there's some lobsters there's mushrooms out don't get me wrong but it wasn't like other years but right now it's like all saprobic uh all growing off dead wood dead logs things like that and um but it keeps it, it keeps it kind of interesting we're gonna go this way dogs must be on leash gunner's on an invisible leash seriously he's like the best dog in the world all i gotta do is be like hey and he'll look uh, look he stops what a good boy and i have a leash in my pocket just because sometimes people get scared but you know he's just he's a free roamer you know he does what he wants and he's good at it he's a good boy <laughs> you know you guys should probably be out there in the woods mushroom picking because it's a nice day if you're up here anywhere probably down in oregon too um we've all just been getting crapped on by the weather for a couple weeks which i love extreme weather whatever i'm not complaining about the weather i respect mother nature she's doing what she's doing because it needs to get done you know and so i try to just fit in with the flow of things rather than be upset or discouraged about how the weather is being but uh you know i do get a little cabin fever for sure so it's so nice to be outside in the sunshine taking you guys along with me i don't know is this cool like should i do this more um i see your comments but uh somebody said that i should go live and i never have so here we are oh gunner smells a truffle or something 
Just kidding. I wish. This is truffle season. So the, the Oregon white truffles, black truffles also, they're growing right now. But I think I'm in the wrong habitat. I guess they like smaller trees. But Douglas fir especially. And there's a lot of uh, Douglas fir plantations in this area where people have... Um, you, you know, there's a, a land company called McCormick Woods who planted all of these Christmas tree farms back in the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. And these trees are now 30 or 40 years old. I guess those are the get, uh, are the best uh, host for the good tuber species truffles that grow around here. And so I met some gals in October that have a truffle dog and they hunt truffles all the time. And she said she's down to make a video with me. I just remember that. So I got to get a hold of her and we're going to go out in the woods and find some truffles with her dog. Old Gunner here, he doesn't know. I bet he'd be good at, at hunting them though. He, uh, you know, he's a hound. He's a hound lab. His dad was a black and tan coon hound. His mom, a black lab. But he's 120 pounds, so pretty big boy. A lot bigger than most Labradors, but he, uh, you know, I think he could sniff out some mushrooms. Right here, there's a little bit of fungi growing on the end of this log. And I bet you that that is uh, Fomitopsis mountiae, super duper common, the red belted conch. All these down trees often have those growing on them. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm keeping my eyes open for mushrooms here. And like I said, they're just kind of scarce right now. I don't know how to see the chat. There it is. Looks like I have a bad connection. Yeah, that happens out in the woods, you know. The best forests have the worst connection. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I'm in a pretty good forest right now. Connection's not that good. But it is a shame this area over here they're developing putting in like a thousand new homes across the other side of the wetland over there so a lot of habitat loss but it's the way it goes look right down here in the moss the common name look at these cute little mushrooms common name of these guys are moss bells so these are little moss loving gallerina see it's got this really dark stipe kind of an orange tinge to the gills you guys see that thing and uh i'm gonna let me flip the camera around so there we go one of the moss bells very striate cap so see the cap how it's got those lines on it that's called striations this one has a really dark stipe that's actually very tough and flexible a lot of mushroom stems are soft or they just break really easy these ones are really tough this one's like a Gallerina vitiformis group. So these ones like to grow in the dark forest where there's no wind, no sunlight, a little bit of moss, and they're very small. And they have kind of this uh, rusty brown colored spore print. They are related to Gallerina marginata, so a uh, deadly poisonous mushroom, but I think these little moss ones are not, not too poisonous. Um, nobody would really try eating them. Look at this, Peltigera. This is a lichen. So, I don't know too much about lichen, but they're, they're very unique looking, very old plants. It's actually like part plant, part fungus, uh, something like that. And that's all I'm going to say about it, because I'm going to sound dumb if I try to pontificate on what lichens are, you know. There's so many mushrooms to learn. I do like plant ID too, you know. Um, plant ID is important if you're going to learn mycology. You're going to have to start learning the plants and especially the trees growing around. You know, this right here, really common plant that grows here in the PNW. This is known as salal. So these are um, used agriculturally in like floral arrangements. And there are brush pickers that come out here. They gather this stuff up. They put it into neat bundles and then they pack it out of here to their van. And one day I was walking in the woods. It was really dark. It was raining, I was alone, way out in the woods. And I'm looking at the ground because I pick mushrooms, looking down. And suddenly I look up and there's the silhouette of this monster in the middle of the trail, probably 10 feet tall. And what it was, was this guy, he had these bundled up in nice bunches laid across his back. And 
this dude was like taking up the whole trail and i looked up and i looked him in his face and i screamed at him <laughs> i was like ah and he was like ah we scared each other right and uh then we had a laugh and i watched him lumber back you know down the trail off into the distance with this huge amount of brush on his back so that happens unfortunately a lot of those uh, brush pickers leave behind a lot of trash out here in the woods a lot of rubber bands and stuff so i always try to pick those up when i see them and put them in my pocket or something like that okay beautiful mushroom alert check this thing out look at these conks growing on the side of this log on the end of this log here this is a fairly old decaying conifer log here so these are a beautiful mushroom pretty common in the winter i always see them like in january or february so these ones are known as the rosy conch rhodophomies cayenne wow what a beautiful mushroom look they're very like pinkish colored pinkish to kind of you know they're really light on the outer margin then pinkish and then they get darker even reddish hues so this is eating the inside of this log the rhodophomies cayenne or cayenne uh, these uh these are named after a mycologist and let me flip this camera around for you check these out and so they're really really beautiful and right now they have a lot of gutation so that's those little driplets that's called gutation and i hope you guys can see all of those little drops very cool very photo so i'm actually I take some beautiful pictures of these. You can see them on my Instagram or on TikTok. But the rosy conch, just uh, gorgeous little mushrooms. And this gutation, these little driplets that you see, you know, Hydnellum peckii grows around here and can often look like this. This is actually, you know, look, it's got kind of a reddish color to it. It's just pigmentation and probably some enzymes coming out and mainly water that's just being squeezed out of the mushrooms. But it sure makes, uh, makes it very photogenic, very beautiful to take photographs off in the light. It looks like amber or something like that. So these ones in the foamy top CACA, so they're related to the red belted conch and the foamy topsis um, ocracia. And they just like eating all of the white uh, cellulose within this log, leaving behind all the brown material. And so that's how they get the name, the brown rot decayer. It's a little confusing because it seems backwards to me. But um, very cool. Anyways, we'll get going. Gunner! Let's see. I ain't implanting no chip in my melon. Okay. Okay, neuro chip. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Okay, so looks and sounds great. Hi from Germany. What's up? Hi, Germany. I have a couple of German mushroom friends. Daniel Winkler. He is awesome. Kirsten Johnson. She is super cool. Uh, I would love to go to Germany and pick some pilts. Is that what you... That's what you call them. Pilts, I think. German from mushroom, so... Yeah, you know, there just isn't a ton to look at. I'm probably boring you all, maybe. I don't know. I'm having fun. This is like my favorite thing to do uh, is just walk the trails. Now, you can find a diversity of mushrooms that are growing out here in the brush. Right now, everything is wet, and I'm not wearing rain gear. So I would be soaked if I went 30 feet off the trail. One thing about mushrooms is they do seem to uh, like human interaction and human disturbance. You know, they like growing along the sides of trails. Um, maybe it's because they can, you know, get their spores to hitchhike on your pant leg. Uh, maybe it's because it's, you know, more open. There's little drafts of fresh oxygen that they can get when it's carved out of the forest like this. And maybe they grow just as well everywhere we just happen to see them easier on the side of the trail either way you don't have to go too far off the beaten path to find cool mushrooms to study if you're picking mushrooms for edible purposes like chanterelles lobster mushrooms masataki yeah you're gonna have to get off the trail and in that case you know probably be wearing some rain gear and stuff right down here i see kind of a unique mushroom popping up right here 
looks different it is not the same as the hyphaloma look at that this is one of the pink gills so this is a, a fairly common mushroom that grows here in the winter they were out uh, all of winter and early spring last year this is a in the genus nelenia uh, or entoloma i can't think of the name of the exact species of this one right now but they are like really pretty common in the spring and it's a pretty soft stipe they've got a they've got a unique feel to them and a pink spore print and probably no good for eating as a lot of mushrooms in that genus entoloma subgenus nelenia can be quite poisonous um, one of them is even deadly but it's not this one i don't think so um, but perhaps i should send this one into the myco blitz as well there's going to be a ton more of these coming out i guarantee that and they like growing out of the moss just right out of the forest floor and more saprobic mushrooms oh look at this guy he's just totally out here for everybody to see cool oh wow interesting it's so pretty just growing right here next to the trail that i don't really want to uh want to want to pick that guy i think that that's a clytosabe maybe clytosabe fragrance the fragrant funnel smells like um it smells like anise and it is very poisonous so but some mushrooms just scream at you to not pick them and so that's what i've decided to do is just leave that one all alone so anyways so glad you all could join and it's been kind of fun but uh i'm gonna do my own thing now so thanks for joining mushroom wonderland and i hope to see you guys on future videos and uh i'm wishing you all a mush love peace out everyone